on the agenda today we have we're going to go through a bunch of different stuff some of it is franchise frustrations franchisee frustrations so what people get frustrated about when they're looking for a franchise um we'll talk about we'll go meet goliath tech so who are we the team a little bit and so on and so forth what is in it for me so if i'm a franchisee and i'm looking to buy a franchise what is it that i want available business models so we're going to talk about different op ways to become a franchisee depending on your personal situation uh, start the journey which is basically going through you know the steps involved in assessing you know is this the right franchise for me and then in the end we're going to do a question and answer period which will be an open forum written questions and or verbal questions from you so my name is james uh, my official title is technical specialist here um so what my role would be uh, especially in the beginning if you came on board and became a franchisee is we'd be working closely together to make sure that you understand all the processes um and that we look at uh, each project uh and all its challenges so that once you come on board we just don't hand you the keys and and we, we hope for the best we'll work very closely together in the beginning to make sure that uh, we answer all your questions and all your needs are met. Do you want to talk about yourself? Yeah, I guess so. So I'm Julian Reising. I'm the CEO of Goliath Tech. Uh, Goliath Tech was founded in 2004 by um, a young gentleman named David Bissonnette. Uh, I ended up buying his company after he ran it for about nine years. I bought it in 2013, um, converted the company into uh, a franchise model when I bought it. You know, he was a, a a guy working out of his garage in a small little area in Sherbrooke, Quebec, uh, a little town in, up in Canada. And he basically, you know, he was running for, for nine, 10 years and he basically was making money and, and so on and so forth. But I saw it as more an opportunity that could go global. So franchise frustration. So when people are looking to buy a franchise, a bunch of things occur. You know, they start analyzing you know, the many opportunities out there it could be restaurants, could be construction like we are, could, you know, there's different things. So, but there's certain things that, that are always frustrating for the franchisee. Uh, first one is obviously long setup time. You know, you buy, uh, I don't know, a, a given restaurant chain franchise and, and, and you want to get going, but then, you know, you've got to build a building. You've got to get the equipment. You've got to go through all this process. And a year later, you're finally set up and you're up and running because you've got to get permitting. You've got to get find a location. And there's, there's quite a complex uh, setup time. Whereas with Goliath Tech, you know, we can you can literally be in your living room within a few weeks after signing your contract. You're up and running and you're 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 you're, you're making money already. So so there's very 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 quick setup time with the Goliath Tech franchise. Uh, Another thing people get frustrated about is very high royalty fees. So they're working hard for these for these other franchisors, and and in the end, they're giving these massive royalties to the franchisor, and it's sort of cutting into their profitability. We don't we don't do that. We have a zero royalty um, setup, so that makes it nice and easy. Uh, strict brand guidelines. So what does that mean? You know, obviously we 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 want to maintain our quality. We want to maintain our name, and so on and so forth. And it's a very important thing to do. But at the same time, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be completely overreacting on, 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 on brand guidelines. But at the same time, you know, we want our reputation to be clean in the market. So, so we're, we're lenient, but we're not. So it's somewhere in the middle, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously, because our brand is very important. Uh, lack of opportunity. Um, you're limited by, you know, how many chairs there are in the restaurant, as a good example. And there are large setup costs. Um, uh, we're going to go through these issues and why at Goliath Tech, um, you don't have to face these problems when buying one of our franchises. Um, so franchise cost. Uh, first franchise frustration is some of the franchises out there, uh, you know, they're massive investments. You know, you want to start a hotel, obviously you're talking about, you know, could be million dollars to, to build the building, start the hotel. It's two years of planning and it's, it's they're obviously very, uh, very, very, um, costly and lengthy set up so it's, it's hard to just sort of jump into business and it's very it's not very accessible for 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 the average budget we'll call it um you know same can uh, happen for other smaller chains as well because you're still talking into the millions so high demands could be strict guidelines strict operating guidelines so there's basically zero leeway on how your day 
goes about. So you're you're so uh, stuck within a frame. You know, obviously as a franchiser, we want to have a, a frame. That's, that's the whole purpose of being a franchise chain. But at the same time, um, you know, we don't want to lock people down so that so that they they just have no room to create and, and grow with their business and, and help us grow. You know, we, we, um, another issue could be very very long franchise terms, a twenty five year commitment. Um, we do it in five year increment increments, so it's 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 a different uh, you know a different model where you can you know obviously you're going to renew after five years, but you're not tied in at the get go with a twenty five year uh, period. Um, we don't force people to have a one point five million dollar net worth like some other chains might do, uh, because you know we're we're not targeting that category where someone has to have that that amount of cash. Uh, startup time. Many of the chains, obviously, as I was saying earlier, you know, you're building a building, you're building a hotel, you're opening a restaurant. Uh, you you have a massive startup time. At the Goliath Tech franchise, you go through a week of boot camp training, Jim, over here, and um, you know, you're operational immediately. So within you know three weeks, three four weeks after signing already you're out there and you're, you're making money there's there's not this you know year of planning while your money's going out the door and, and no revenues coming in um you're, we're not going to leave you in the jungle after a week we're going to do the training but then you know you'll be tied at the hip to gym over here for could be six months because there's so many new scenarios that will come up so so after your 40-hour boot camp you know you're, you're off and running but at the same time we're not just leaving you out in the field you, you've got ongoing training for a minimum of six months. I mean, so actually, realistically, it never really ends because there's always new products coming up, there's new scenarios coming up. So that goes on for a long time. <laughs> so meet Goliathic. Who are we? We have all kinds of different awards for different things that have happened over the years. Um, you know, recognized from third parties. Example. Um, you know, we had a great one from uh, Entrepreneur Magazine that says out of the, all the best at top top chains in the world we were in the top 10 best investment versus return on your money and the reason they said that is because with the goliath tech franchise there was no limitation to how big you can grow your franchise whereas in it, so so if you want to put that in relative to another opportunity if you if you get a restaurant franchise well there's only let's say 50 chairs in your restaurant you can only put three shifts a day so you're limited by the amount of space you have and and, and the area where you work in whereas in the Goliath tech system it's, it's not at all like that you know you can do fencing you can do decks you can do patios you can do windmills you can do so it's a, it's a much larger range of possibilities to, to to grow with over the years um we have 150 open franchise units we're opening at least one or two new ones every month somewhere in the world no royalty fees before we were talking about a lot of the franchise chains have royalty fees which is uh you know basically taking your hard-earned money making it Go away at the end <laughs> and the franchiser kind of reaps back uh, that that amount but we don't do that we're a product-based franchise you buy the product you mark it up you keep all your money <laughs> you know we don't we don't try to take money back from you as a royalty on your operations so uh, my esteemed colleague has been talking quite a bit about the business part of goliath tech but you're probably wondering what will i be doing as a franchisee so you'll be installing helical piles so what is a helical pile and what is it used for a helical pile is basically a, an enormous large screw we install in the ground with our calibrated insulation equipment. And with that, we can calculate the resistance or the insulation torque required to install that helical pile. And from that, we can deduce exactly how much capacity or how much weight we can put on that helical pile. And a helical pile can be used for literally any foundation needed to support the smallest structure as a mailbox, to a larger structure such as a bridge. It all depends on the, the size of the, the, the pile, the depth, the size of the helix, and all those things we'll talk about when we get going. So how have helical piles really revolutionized the construction industry? So there are a few ways, but probably the most relevant for our conversation today is the speed and efficiency of the installation of the helical pile. Um, we'll never completely get rid of concrete, but imagine you can do your foundation for your, for, your, for your deck or your home addition. You can install the foundation in as little as one day. 
There's no delays for concrete availability right now, which is quite an issue. There's no curing time. There's no uh, unwanted excavation where we have to remove bad soil, fill in compaction, more concrete, more curing time. We install the pile and then we can build on it immediately. So why buy a franchise within the construction industry? Um, when times are, you know, when the economy is going very well, well, people are building and construction is booming. When the economy goes really bad, well, then people are renovating and there's still, so construction never really takes, um, not the same as, as a lot of industries that go into slumps during uh, poor economies, which is obviously what we're heading into right now. Um, in the, in, in the, in the construction industry, it's, it's, it's an ever growing global industry. So even if, uh, you know, markets go well or poorly. There's there's so much work out there in the construction. I mean, you know, you drive around your own city wherever you live, and all you all you see in every direction is construction. So if you're aggressive and you and you want the business as a franchisee, it's there. You just have to grab it. Why would I be? Um, why would I want to get into the helicopile business if I'm not a contractor? Um, well, you know, you you want you have, we're not looking for. For general contractors we're looking for business people that want to grow businesses so you don't have to be in the construction industry you could be in any industry you want in our top our, in our top five uh, franchisees the top five performers uh, i think it's three or four out of the five did not come from the, from the construction industry whatsoever you know one was a school teacher and, and, and you know different stuff like that but you don't have to be a contractor to get into this because we, we will train you how to do the installation part. It's more of a business growth sales um, opportunity. So who are we looking for? We're looking for entrepreneurs, um, business opportunity seekers, go-getters. So what's a, what's a go-getter? A go-getter is someone that's willing to pick up the phone, call upon general contractors who will be your customers as a franchisee, and get repeat business. So go out there and, you know, get these guys that are, they're going to call you 50 times a year to do pile jobs for them. So once you get one of these general contractors going, you know, you can expect repeat and repeat and repeat business. And that, that's why we say we need go-getters, people that aren't, aren't afraid to pick up the phone and, and do that. So what's in it for me? Why do I want to be a franchisee uh, of Goliath Tech? Um, earlier, I was explaining that there's sort of no, there is no cap on the amount of business you can do. So obviously there's no there's no cap on the amount of profit and you can make. And obviously without a royalty fee, it makes it very attractive versus some other franchises out there. Um, the training is very thorough <laughs> to say the least. You know, we go through an incredible, we've been evolving this training for years and years and years. And, and, and we're very good at it because we open a lot of franchises every month. And, um, you know, the, the training process is very fluid and the support after training for that first critical year, we'll call it, is, you know, we're right there for you. Uh, setup is very fast, you know, as fast as you can get an excavator, you know, 10 days later, we can have your, your quick attach built over here and your motor shipped and everything out the door and, and you're operational. Um, you have access as a franchisee to a, an incredibly, you know, people buy a franchise because they, they want structure. They want back the back end to support what they're doing out in the field. You know, you don't want to have to have your own engineering department and accounting and customer service, a manufacturing plant, you know, all that is us. What we support you with is the manufacturing, the engineering, accounting, customer service, uh, uh, field support. So I'm look, I'm out in the mud and I've got to put up this huge structure and I've never done this before. This is a new scenario. I may have done a hundred jobs before, but this scenario is new. Well, you, you're a phone call away from a person who can say, well, we have a chain of, of franchisees who do about three to 4,000 construction jobs a month. You know, within that, you can imagine that there's always a scenario that, 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 that matches or, or is similar to what you're trying to get done today. So we've got the support and the, and the backing and the experience and the, and the, volume of jobs going on that will be able to support you. Um, we spent a ton of money on purpose on patents because we wanted to make sure that um, we had advantages over our competition. We don't like going out there and saying, well, this guy's $99 on the next guy's $98 and then we're going to come in at $97. That's a hard sale and, and, it, and it creates price erosion. 
Instead, what we did is we said, okay, those guys are $100. Well, we're 100 as well. But here are all the technical advantages of why you want to go with a Goliastic pile. And that's a much more, um, that's a much stronger sale because people aren't necessarily looking to save a dollar. They want to make sure that the thing, that the structure is properly supported and has certain features. So we give you technical feature advantages so that when you're doing your, um, your sales process with your customers, you have that, um, you know, those check boxes that people want, that people lock into to help you sell as opposed to price wars, which nobody likes. Um, we're hundred percent compliant with all the building codes. Um, whether you're, you know, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you know, we have people in France, we have people in the U S people in Canada, people in the Caribbean, it doesn't matter. We, we always comply with the codes, you know, the engineering design vary depending on the given local code, but we always meet it. Uh, we have a standard 30 year warranty on our piles. So that's for, for the physical piles themselves. Rated number one in the helical pile industry. What does that mean? It's because we're the fastest growing, we're moving globally into new markets faster than anyone else. We have an incredibly high-end product that's extremely competitive. Talked about the check boxes before. That's, that's a lot what that's about. Uh, and then of course, there's this whole concept of, um, you know, our products do not move. So fa fa a lot of people build, as an example, a deck or a patio on concrete foundations. But what happens is when the ground freezes or if there's ground movement, if you have expansive soils or, or clay, um, when the soils move or freeze, your structures will move and fluctuate. Whereas with a helical pile, there's zero movement because they're penetrated deep into the soil where they don't have... Uh, you're not facing that kind of a movement because the, the pile itself is physically held to the ground as well. So it doesn't only hold your structure up, it actually holds it down as well. Yeah, let you come. So uh, sphere installation. Okay, so why is a helical pile better than, you know, you know concrete, uh, other sorts of piles, a driven pile, that sort of thing? Well, for instance, you can install a helical pile that can support 30,000 pounds of compression load. So you can put 30,000 pounds of weight on one pile. You can install that pile with a relatively small mini excavator. The excavator can weigh as little as 5,000 pounds. So you can have, you can build a, a very strong foundation for, for basically, like I said, any kind of structure from a, from a mailbox to uh, a home addition and everything in between with a very small piece of installation equipment. You don't have to be concerned about showing up to your job site with a 20 ton excavator, large trucks bringing the equipment in, the concrete trucks, pump trucks, that sort of thing. You can do an unbelievable amount of work with very small installation equipment. All right, so world-class support. Um, what does that mean? It means that, you know, we've, we've you know, this is not the first um, company, if I look at it, because I'm, uh, it's not the first company that I built from zero. Uh, I was very used. I had a company prior to this one, which had 11,000 resellers in 67 countries in the world. And, you know, you don't get there unless you have world-class support because you, you won't win. You're, you're not, you're going to fade. People are going to walk away if they don't get that feeling. So you have to, as a franchisor, you know, to build confidence and trust in your franchisees and of course in their customers because that's that's the real customer a franchisee is not the customer it's, it's it's the actual person you know receiving the service or getting the piles to build that support you know you have to have world class support um so getting to know each other uh very important obviously we'll, we'll do that slowly but surely as we after you sign you know you're going to go through a bunch of steps before you sign as well of course you know there's that whole you know who are we what do we do and so on and so forth um there's certification with our experts. So you'll go through a training program as we talked about earlier. Um, then there's growing with us. You know, that's, that's an, a never ending model. We might be talking the same, we might be telling you the same thing in 10 years, right? Here we are, well, what's our goal? We're gonna grow some more, <laughs> that's what we do. Um, support on the job, well, if we don't have the best world-class service and support on the job and, you know, it's, it's all tied together. So here's a few of our success stories. Like Julian was saying, uh, four of, I believe it's four of our top five uh, most successful franchisees had very, very little to no experience in the construction excavation industry.
So uh, these are a few, uh, for example, Darcy and her husband, she was a teacher and he was an electrical engineer. When they came here for the training, they rented a, a, an excavator and actually practiced in their backyard before they got here. That's how little experience they had. So you may be wondering, again, as Julian's point, I'm not, I don't have uh, experience in construction or excavation. Well, I'll give you an example. You can be a world-class chef and open a McDonald's franchise. But if you don't show up in the morning to unlock the door and turn the ovens on, it's just not going to succeed. We're actually looking for the person, not the experience that you already have. All right, so steps to ownership. Um, how do you go through the process of, of, of buying a Goliath Tech franchise? Well, first of all, obviously there's the initial contact. Um, we're gonna hook you up with one of our franchise specialists, so someone who you know, will guide you through, you know, what, it, what is this all about? What is the contract? What, what's in there? What's the depths of our relationship? Um, after you go through, you know, what typically takes a few weeks, three, four, five weeks of of that initial contact where you're just learning about the opportunity. Um, then you go through this process, you know, one and two, where your, your, your initial contact getting to know us, where you start looking at the numbers. So we start analyzing the market, where you're going to go with it, what you want to do as a franchisee. Do you want to have, you know, start with one crew or do you want to go in with, with 15 crews, like some of our bigger franchisees? You know, it depends what you have as, a, as an investment, um, you know, goal versus, um, you know, the setup will 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 suggest for you because we're going to guide you. You know, if you say, you know, I've got X amount of funds to to inject at the starting point. Well, X might mean we have a very large structured franchise, or it might mean we have a simple you know one man show to start, build it slowly, grow it. It's it's up to 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 your budget, right? We follow that obviously. Uh, another big step is obviously once you go through that, you know, first three steps, you want to talk with other franchisees. Um, I've rarely seen a franchise sale go through where a franchisee or a potential franchisee didn't get on the phone and talk to them, other franchisees, as well as actually flying up and visiting some of them, you know, walk around one of our locations, follow one of their crews in the field, uh, watch their, their, you know, the, the office side. What is it? What, what are they doing? How are they getting business? How are they communicating with their customers? That's a huge, important step. Um, it's actually, you know, it would be a shame not to do that because it's, it's such a critical part of the whole evaluation process. After you go through those first four steps, then the next step would be signing an agreement. Very simple, you know, we've gone through all the details of the agreement in the previous steps. So you sign your agreement and then we go straight into our uh, step where we start to introduce you to all the departments. So you'll get introduced to your, your internal rep and the engineering side, you'll get a CS rep, You'll get a support and training rep, um, manufacturing. Basically, you'll, you'll have different people to support you. You'll get introduced to them. Then after that, you're going to go through our training program. So you will either come up here to the head office and do the training program. Uh, sometimes we'll do it in the field. Uh, most people come up here because they want to, you know, they want to walk around the floor. We have a huge plant. And, and um, you know, if you walk around the manufacturing floor here, and then you go out in the field and you meet your customers. It's always easier to sell it when you've when you've walked around and you've you've kicked the tires and you say, okay, well, I saw the big presses and I saw the the laser cutting machines and I saw the cranes and all that heavy equipment that actually manufactures this and it makes it easier to speak to your customer about how it's made, about the quality. You know, when you walk on our floor, you know, you can eat a pizza put a pizza on the floor and eat it no it's clean very very clean manufacturing floor um and then and then you're off you launch your business you know and and you'll have shaky legs whatever we'll be there to hold you it's normal uh, everyone is a bit nervous at the beginning the first few weeks really first job is obviously tough but you know like anything the first first time you do anything in your life it's always going to be a uh a feat right and a learning curve and a learning curve but but we're right there we're, you're not you're not going in alone you know that's why people buy franchise. they don't they don't want to go in to something they don't know all right so step one uh life as a franchisee so what is the life as a franchisee i bought my franchise i went through all that stuff that we just talked about what happens the next day so the next day you wake up in the morning uh very simple pick up the phone 
or you go out there and you go and meet foundation repair companies, contractors, decking companies, engineering firms, architecture firms, and you present to them. Um, we actually consistently fly out to help you at the beginning to meet these new companies because it's, it's hard to when you don't know the lingo yet i mean sometimes it'll be we'll be there live uh you know you're presenting to an engineering firm that has 25 engineers in one room at a lunch and learn in their facility well we might go there live or other times you know you may have one guy and you say well you know not worth grabbing a plane but we'll, we'll have uh, one of our our presentation um, specialists on video doing the presentation while you're there live and our goal when we do that is to train you how to present. So A, we're getting you a customer while we're there live, or, and, well, and we are training you at the same time to be able to present yourself. So it's become scalable. It's, it's, it's a, you know, we wanna transfer knowledge from to, to each one of our franchisees. So step one, you go out there, you meet contractors. Step two, you receive project plans from the contractors, very simple, uh, they will, so, you know, I've got section, such and such structure to build. Um, they'll send you a set of plans, maybe a soils report, depending on the size of the project. You will then give those plans to either our in-house engineers, or you may use a local engineer as well. Both are fine. Um, after three, four days goes by, uh, you'll receive a recommendation back, either from our engineers or the engineer you choose locally. Um, who will say, you know, it's this diameter pile, it's got to go this depth and so on and so forth. Uh, you will then dispatch your crew for installation, do the job, invoice your customer, back to step one, get back on the phone, get another contractor going. And, and, and by the way, you're not calling one customer for one sale, you're calling repeat business contractors. So in a perfect world, You've got one person that's consistently out there calling new customers while you've got a support crew and you'll, you'll build it over time. You know, if it doesn't happen on the first day, it's okay. But you'll, you'll have a support crew out there executing the jobs, executing the jobs. But one person always out there building um, that client base, which, which you need certification. Uh, I, I mean, well... Uh um so we have our our, our iso uh 9001 or 14001 so basically the the um the efficiency and the consistency of our manufacturing um it's a, it's also we meet all the environmental rules uh is uh, i icc and um the CCMC is kind of the same thing the icc is for the us ccmc is for canada it's the um uh, materials code that we follow to make sure that we're again we're consistent with our with our um, our manufacturing our CWB and the AWS is the the welding certificates for Canada and the US um, the other uh, go over much more in much more detail when you come on board but it's basically that we meet all the required building code certificates etc in Canada the US Europe in literally anywhere we're operating we always beat we, we always meet all the required building codes uh, we've won tons of awards. Um, I talked about uh, one of them before, which was our best investments versus return. But you know, there's there's all kinds of different things that, that people recognize us for. We get ranked in the franchise 500. We get uh, you know franchisee choice awards from Canadian Franchise Association or the U.S. or the International Franchise Association in the U.S. Uh, we get rated by Franchise Gator in the top 100, and there's there's many different awards that we have won over the years. Uh, start your journey. Okay, so there's different models that you can choose to become a franchisee. Um, the first model, very simple, you don't have a business of any sort. You you go through the process and you start your business from zero uh, through really everything we talked about earlier, which is most of our franchisees. I'd say about well, maybe 70% go from uh, you know no active current business to running one of our locations and that's that's pretty much most of the franchisees but there are other uh, types of, of of models that happen some people will have an existing business it may be in construction they may be a painter they may be whatever part of the industry they and 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 maybe they're they're not doing so well in that industry so they want to convert to something that's a little more profitable you know the piling industry is a very profitable industry so that's uh, it's always um, 
attractive to people looking for a new a new angle. Um, third one is you have a construction company and you have a series of customers that you're already supporting, but you want to increase the amount of business you do with those customers. So you say, well, what can I do to take my, you know, I don't know, five, $10 million of revenue and bring that to 15? Well, you might, you know, you want to keep those customers, but you might want to introduce a new product and that some people will do that by using, uh, by buying a Galactic franchise to, uh, to in, inject more growth into their current business model. So what does it cost? Uh, very simple. Uh, it's actually a very inexpensive franchise to get into. Uh, the franchise fee itself is $49.5. Um, that's the actual fee. Then there's the investment range. So what does that mean? Um, 100,000 to 241,000 investment range means that you know, all things in computers, your pickup truck, your trailer, your excavator, all the different equipment you're going to need. Your total investment uh, will be 100 to 240 something thousand uh, investment range. Again, no royalty fee uh, whatsoever. We don't charge. Uh, we have a 6% uh, product purchases goes to an international advertising fund. Um, what that is, is all the franchisees pay in to a marketing fund. And that money, we don't keep it. This is a member, there's no royalties here. We don't keep that money. We take that money and we put it right back into your area. And we, we use our internal marketing uh, specialist because obviously, you know, when you buy a franchise, one of the things you're buying is a marketing department. So you, if it's, you, you're, you're wiser to give us 6% of your money and then our specialists in helical pile marketing go out there and, and do what's right to be able to, to get business and market pull for you as opposed to try to learn it on the fly. You know, that's, that's why, again, why you're buying a franchise, right? So I, I'll just take the one more point to this. So if we're looking at the total event investment, um, one of the things to keep in mind, if you're looking at this as from a, a risk point of view, is the equipment you need, for instance, you need a pickup truck, a trailer, an excavator. That's what else you need to buy separate from what comes from us. So if you're looking at it from a risk point of view, those are very low risk items to buy. If things change, if, if for whatever happens, uh, you can easily sell those those items. The only specific equipment that, that you purchase from us is the insulation drive head. And it's a relatively low cost if we look at the overall cost. So as opposed to, for instance, buying a, a McDonald's franchise, again, I'll go with McDonald's, buying a McDonald's franchise where you buy a very specific McDonald's French fry oven, which if things don't work out, you're kind of stuck with that. I mean, it's very specific. You can only potentially sell it to other McDonald's franchisees. With us, again, it's very low risk items, truck, trailer, excavator, and you can easily, as of right now, you could probably resell them without a profit, actually. All right, so we've made it through the presentation, <laughs> or you've made it through the presentation. <laughs> it's easy for us. Um, uh, and we'd like to know if you have any questions. Um, we have a pull up here, the question and answer uh, screen. So if anybody has any questions about uh, the franchise itself or anything that, that we didn't cover today that, that you'd be interested to know, this is the time for you to pop up some questions. and. and you know, if our presentation is so good that we answered everything you could possibly think of, that's great, but usually it doesn't go that way. So let's see what you got. <laughs> How do I know if my territory is available? How do I know if my territory is available? Uh, on our website, you can you can you can click through it and 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 sort of get an idea of your territories. Uh, but you know, the easiest way is you 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 write in, you email us, we fill out our form, and you ask one of our reps. Uh, you know, if your area is available. Um, what other people are around you know hopefully your, your area would be available if you're lucky and and you know they'll advise you on that any other questions i got it yeah are you there Jorge? yes um so you guys are recording the presentation can we yeah. get a copy of it because uh, what i'm trying to do is set up a, a, a team um i used to be the the general manager for one of the biggest water dealers in Miami. And I got the people I talked to before I came to this one, um, they couldn't be present. So 
uh, I would like to show them what it is. It's, it's a really good product. You yeah, appreciate it. Um, yes, of course. We'll 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 um, we have your email, so we will send you a link to the the presentation itself. But of course, uh, be more than that. Thank you. And obviously, if 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 you know, we'll always make ourselves available. If you have someone that you think is is needs to be you know better explained. Oh, definitely. No, definitely. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out and 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 actually we're gonna probably move on. But I gotta, I gotta, I gotta show them first, and then, of course, we'll them there. Yeah, pleasure, con placer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Gabriela asked if, if I can install wherever I want, even outside my territory, if there's no other Goliathek installer. That's right. So, actually, if you buy a Goliathek franchise, you're allowed to install anywhere in the country as long as it's not inside of another franchisee's territory. So you're free to roam, um, but let's say sometimes you do come up with a situation, say, well, I got a job and, and it is in another franchisee's territory. Uh, legally, we can't give you permission to go in there, but the franchisees talk all the time and they work together. So you, you, know, you just, you call your neighbors, say, look, I got a job and it's, it's, it's just in on your side and you work it out with them. We let you figure that out with the other franchisees, but legally we can't, you know, when you buy a franchise, it's an exclusive territory. So we've given you exclusivity. So we can't uh, authorize someone else to go in. But the general rule is very simple. You can install anywhere in the country. Uh, if it's in another franchisee's territory, you have to you know, clear it with them. And, and just add one more point to that. Uh, installing in another franchisee's territory, it does come up all the time. Uh, there's, there's, there's super communication. And as of yet, it has never, ever been an issue. Yeah. They, they work together because what happens is let's say you're two contractors two franchisees in new york city and you know you're going to cross one contractor on the west side of town and the other con the same contractor is going to go to the east side of town so if your neighboring franchisee got some business in the west side of town well you're going to benefit in the east side of town when that contractor goes there so so they all trade because they know that if one wins they both win always so they're they're very open in, in trading uh, work can I use helical from. piles from another com company's uh, product? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> and why, why? It's very simple. Uh, we give you exclusive rights to our product, so we expect that you use our products exclusively as well. So you know, it's 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 a hand in hand uh, um, exchange. You know, we lock ourselves to you; you lock ourselves to us, which is normal, right? How long does it take to get up and running? Is it too late for 2022 or november let's see i don't think it's too late for october <laughs> uh, uh, so uh how long does it take a hundred a uh, hundred percent of the time it always depends on the person on how ready you are uh, because uh, I, I can i can guarantee uh you will be the bottleneck on how quickly you want to get going uh we're there to help you uh, we're, we don't want to push you, but we will go as fast as you want to go. Is it too late for 2022? Like Julian said, it's never too late. Um, but of course, depends on where you are. You will have peak building season. So for instance, in Canada, Northern US, the, the, the peak building is uh, you know April till November. So uh, you may want to finish off this year strong, kind of getting a name out or start now to prepare for, for next year's building season? So the short answer is no, it's not too late. Yeah. Somebody is asking the question, do I need a contractor's license? Uh, depends on the state in the US, uh, if we're on the US side. Um, I believe Florida, California, uh, two or th I think a total of three or four states that you have to have a license and all the rest I believe you don't and it also gets a little more complicated if you plan on doing commercial or residential mm -hmm. so we strongly recommend wherever you are wherever the territory is you plan on working inform yourself uh, it's never a, it's never a huge deal to get a contractor's license but if you need one and everything else is a go but you at the last minute you realize you need a contractor's license if you don't have one it's a little bit of a, a wrench in the plans so yeah. again just just inform yourself before you start uh, somebody's asking what is the size of a territory so um bit of a complicated answer sorry uh, the territories that we sell one franchise territory is made up of three what we call maps each map is 
80,000 to 100,000 homes minus high rises. So let's say, for example, uh, one territory could be, if it was 100,000 per map, could be 300,000 addresses minus high rises. The reason we must high rises is because you're not going to put, you know, a deck or a patio in a high rise, right? So, so basically, approximately 300,000 addresses minus high rise, minus high rises is what makes up the size of a franchise territory. Right. So, so that's why when you're speaking to one of our reps and you're looking at the map, some maps might appear very large. Uh, and others quite small, but again, it comes down to the number of, of residents, the number of people in that territory. So it's not on the size of the actual land mass, but how many individuals, how many addresses, how many doors are in that map. Exactly. Right. Do we have any more questions from anybody? I think that's a good wrap. If anybody has questions or thinks of stuff later, obviously we're, in, we're a phone call away or an email away, whatever you prefer. Um, so don't hesitate. You know, call us a hundred times. We, it's normal for us to. No, it's normal for us to uh, to go through a very uh, lengthy process because it's it's new. You know, you you want to buy a business. You have a lot of questions. So don't don't be shy. Um, so great. Thank you very much for for joining our webinar today. We we much appreciate you taking time out of your day, and we hope to see and hear from you in the very near future. Have an excellent afternoon. Thank you very much, everybody. Excellent. Thanks, everyone.